This video is sponsored by Notion. So it's that time of the year again. It's super cold outside, snowing, wet, and low-key depressing. But hey, we have to get it going. Welcome to another productive day in the life with the 14-inch M1 Pro MacBook. Every morning, I have a team meeting for 9.30 a.m. Before my team meeting, I like to get Zoom ready and also make breakfast, which is usually some tea, eggs, or fruits. In order to prepare for my team meeting and the day ahead of me, I like to have a checklist, and that's what I use Notion for. I know Notion is the sponsor for today's video, but if you watch any of my day in the life videos, you always see that I use Notion, and I guess Notion saw that and reached out to me, so I was happy to take on the sponsorship because it's something I actually use every single day. The reason why I love Notion so much and just find it so useful is just how simple it is by having everything in one place. Normally, I would use Evernote to get my notes and scripts, reminders for my to-do list, and then sometimes I would just have shot lists on my phone. Even though it was handy, it kind of got hectic to just be switching between different different apps just to do one task so this is where notion comes in having small pointers of things I would like to talk about within my meeting is very important to me so things just overall flow smoothly and we don't waste any time I use the built-in 1080p webcam for my zoom calls and also the built-in mic from the MacBook, and it works pretty well nobody complained about my audio or image quality Everyone at work uses Notion to collaborate within one workspace and we have this page called Daily Huddles. This is where we come together to see everyone's tasks for the day and at the end of the day we cross off what we accomplished which is great to track goals and just to keep everyone on the right track. Since I knew I had a video shoot today, I had to create a shot list. This is extremely important to me because it gives me a sense of direction so whenever I'm on set I could just take out my phone look at what shots I need to get and take them off as we go. So now I'm in my broad view, my team workspace. So as you guys can see, we have everyone over here. And if someone's online, you could see exactly where they are, which is kind of cool and also what they're doing. But let's jump over to my personal plan, which is right here. And this is my main homepage. So on my main homepage, I just have like an overview of stuff that I want so I could dive into it. So here I have like my notes my personal and client stuff. So let's go into personal for videos because this is where I want to create my shot list. So if I go down to here, we could see that we have ideas, my research plan, scripting, filming, editing, and published. So these are all my YouTube videos that are published. These are ideas that I need to start. And as I said before, it's super useful, super intuitive. So it's like tiles. So for example, I finished this rating your desk setups. I could drag this all the way over to published right here. And I know that that's done. So if I change my project status to like overview, you can see what's published. You can see what's in progress. So these are the stuff that I need to do. Overall, Notion is really good because I could create my own system and tailor it exactly to my specific workflow. Again, here's my personal Notion workspace, which I completely copied from fellow YouTuber Ryan Kao. I have a main hub and then I have different pages that houses different topics and ideas. It might sound complex right now, but it's very simple. In my YouTube page, this is where I track and organize all my YouTube videos. I can see what I'm currently working on and what needs to be edited and what is published and also if the video is sponsored or not so I could track how much money I'm making from the videos. Since it creates a database, I could also see the total of how much money is made across these videos, which is very nice to see. And listen, all of this can be customized and tailored to your specific needs. You could fill in the blocks with anything, either pictures, videos, links, audio files, anything. The fact that everything is made in a page and you could create a database of pages with relationships to each other just makes it the most powerful no-code solution for creating digital business workspace or even for personal stuff. That's why everyone at work uses it. That's why I use Notion to keep me organized. If you guys want me to do a full deep dive into Notion, let me know by getting this video to 2000 likes. If you'd like to check out Notion, use my link down below in the description. Alright guys, so my meeting just ended. Uh, sure guys. So, I started at 9.30. I'm 100% sure the MacBook had full battery life when I just woke up. It currently has 70 battery life. 70%? Yeah, 73%. And as you can see, 
all I did was like Discord and Zoom. So that's kind of weird. But yeah, that's the body life update. So now what I have to do is I have to edit a video for Logitech, the Logitech unboxing video. Um, I was supposed to edit that at 3 p.m. today, but now my shoot got pushed back to 3 p.m. instead of 12, as I figured out in the meeting. So now I just have to chill, edit that video, then head out for work at around 1 p.m. So we don't really have much time, so let's get started. So as you guys can see, yes, we have the PC back, but I still edit on my MacBook. I'm sorry guys, like I had to play games. But basically, I have everything set up right here. So you see this cable right here? That's the USB-C cable I use. So I just have it like on this clip so it doesn't fall behind. So I usually just plug this in right here to my dongle. So that's charging, nice to see. I don't have a USB-C monitor. So I have this HDMI cable that I just hide around the back. Shout out to the HDMI cable coming in clutch. Thanks to Apple for bringing it back because now, all I have to do is just plug this in. My monitor is on. Finally, the mouse, just switch this to number two. And now we could start editing. So you guys might be wondering about the spec MacBook M1 Pro that I have right now. The spec of my MacBook is the M1 Pro with 10 core CPU paired 16 core GPU. I also opted for 32 gigs of unified RAM and one terabyte of internal SSD storage, which is plenty enough since all my files are stored externally anyways. Okay, I just did some editing for my personal YouTube channel. Now it's time to get all my gear organized before I head out to work, such as my camera, extra batteries, lenses, mic, tripod, and of course, the M1 Pro MacBook, which all fits in my camera bag. And I know you guys are gonna ask about this camera bag. So this one is from PGY Tech and it's called the One Mo Camera Backpack. Okay, so my Uber finally came and of course he was super cool and guess what my Uber driver actually said he watches my videos So you watch some of the videos? Yeah, actually you are doing very well. I like it. I like it very much. It's not boring videos You know there is some boring video you can finish it to the end. Yeah, but yours is exciting one. I like it So after my Uber ride to the train station, I was super hungry, so I grabbed some beef patty to fuel me up. All the Jamaicans will know how good this is. In order for me to get to work each day, I have to take this train to head into Toronto, which is usually around 50 minutes of transit. So I usually use this time to plan out my day and maximize my productivity like the productive guru I am. But thankfully, I stayed home earlier today, so I don't really have to do much. But usually, this is what I do on the train. First thing first when I got onto the train, I saved my previous project that I was working on from home. I also decided to follow up on emails I missed overnight, both for my work email and also for my personal YouTube channel email. Typing on the M1 Pro is really fun. That might be a weird way to describe it, but the keys are just easy to press. It's not so loud, so like anyone won't be annoyed that I'm typing. The trackpad is also nice as well. Very smooth, has some nice haptic feedback whenever I'm editing in Premiere Pro. I really don't know how they do it, but it's really cool to experience. I also don't miss the touch bar or am I annoyed by the notch. So after sending a bunch of emails and looking at the snow periodically, Finally, at around 1.30 p.m., I reached Toronto and my MacBook had around 79% battery life. Now I'm glad I charged it up a bit earlier this morning because it was about to die. I'm gonna need safety. Tell the app can't snake me. Break gun off safety. My girl's so tasty. Tell her it's your world. She wants the two tone spaceship. Blow smoke screen daily so the stress don't face me. I'm going. I keep it factual. I'm on some bad things. I got to the office at around 2.10 p.m. and stopped by my favorite local coffee shop called Juliana. The coffee here is phenomenal and it's just such a great environment, plus we get free Wi-Fi. I used this time to work on my thumbnail for this very video you're watching right now and also used Lightroom to fix the shadows and lighting. 
Now, as you can see right here, I'm pretty dark in this picture because I expose for the sky and not for myself, but I can mask myself out and bring up the shadows and it worked instantly. I absolutely love the new masking feature. I then opened up Photoshop to add text to it and it didn't even break a sweat. It literally opened up Photoshop like within a second or two. So yeah, editing photos on this thing is a breeze. No matter how many layers I had or if I had multiple browser tabs open in the background, I had Spotify open, this, that, come on. The M1 Pro, it just didn't slow down. So within the time I was there, still Apple sent me an email that I had to change up a few things. Kind of annoying when companies does that, but hey, we have to work with them. But I'm really excited about this video. I finished all the edits on the spot at the coffee shop. And the reason why I'm excited about this edit is because I will be giving away a laptop for you guys. So this will be on Instagram Reels. Just make sure you guys follow me over on Instagram at Chevron Salmon underscore so you guys can enter this giveaway because this laptop is really cool. But I didn't really have enough time though since I needed to leave at 3 p.m. I also felt a little bit hungry, so I decided to grab some sweet and sour chicken from one of my favorite Chinese restaurants called Dakua. Only till I realized it was closed, so I had to settle for some dirty A&W. One thing I must say, I'm happy I went with the 14 inch model because as you guys can see, I travel a lot and even though I'm traveling so much, I don't really feel the weight on my back. So after my lunch, I needed to grab all the gear I had for work, like the drone, the tripods, the camera, the lenses, all that stuff, and we went on location. When we got to the shoot, I just looked around for a few to ensure everything was aligned, made sure my gimbal was good, and then we went to work. So it took me around two hours and a half to completely film everything in this condo unit. Views up here was amazing, but my SD card was full, so I had to offload all the footage to my MacBook. And this is where the SD card just comes in really clutch and just the portability of the M1 MacBook. So I hooked up my external SSD, plugged in my SD card, offloaded all the footage I needed and I was good to go. I did all my detail shots which took roughly around 15 minutes and after around 3 hours we wrapped everything up and now it's time to head home. On my way back home, I used my time on the train to edit the pictures I took today in Lightroom. The SD card slot came in clutch one more time. For a total of 105 pictures, the import time was quick. Earlier today, I took all the pictures in HDR format so I could expose for the outside and also the inside. And that just makes the real estate pictures look more appealing. Since it's a total of 105 pictures, I needed to create a stack of 35 because the pictures were shot in a burst of 3. The MacBook processed it in no time. So afterwards, I merged the stack into a HDR image. I thought it would take long because it usually does, especially with my M1 MacBook, but it took around three minutes and 50 seconds to merge 35 4K images into an HDR image, and that's pretty impressive. All I had to do next was align the images, make sure they were color corrected, but I didn't have enough time though since eventually I reached my stop and got home at around 8 p.m. The first thing I did when I got home was check my laptop to organize all the footage I shot today at the listing and also for this very video that you guys are watching right now. I also used this app called Better Snap Tool to snap different windows to make more space because for some strange reason, Apple window management is just nowhere as good as Microsoft. One thing with me, I like to organize all my footage as soon as possible after every shoot so I could keep things organized. So you remember that Logitech video that we were trying to export early on today? I wanted to see how long it would actually take to export a Logitech video, but let's compare it to my Windows PC that has an RTX 3080 paired with an i9-10900K and 32 gigs of RAM. This is going to be interesting. This PC right here cost me 4,500 US dollars. It's time to see which one is worth it. Before we start guys, pause the video, comment down below. Who do you think is going to win this render test in Premiere Pro? Export on the MacBook. Yes. 
Start on the PC. Okay, now we're talking. Six minutes on the MacBook, six minutes on the PC. Stopwatch, there we go. Kind of a delay, but it's all good. It's not scientific, you know what I'm saying? Okay, things are heating up, literally. This is the MacBook in its last gear. Do you guys hear those fans? Do you guys hear those fans? 57 left. Basically four minutes left on the PC. We still have to get the food upstairs, so we'll be back. Two minutes basically left on the PC. Almost two minutes left on the MacBook. Six minutes 30 elapsed. Mm, color loo. So the PC is basically dusting the MacBook by a minute. PC, come on. Encode, encode. Come on. Come on. Oh my god, this is this is serious. This is way more serious than I expected. What will it be? I have my timer right here. This is insane, guys. Oh my god, the MacBook finished first. 9 minute 55. 9 minute 55, no way. The PC is still going. It is still going. <laughs> no way. Oh. What's going on? PC. No. PC can't finish encoding up till now. A few moments later. It just finished. Stop. It just finished. As you guys can see right there, the MacBook finished 9 minutes 55 seconds. The PC finished 10 minutes 58 seconds. <sighs> what? So yeah, those results were shocking. It was a neck and neck race and it's just unbelievable what happened in the end. Overall, the M1 Pro MacBook is a beast. You guys just saw it for yourself. So it's time to wind down now. I had a long day. My MacBook is in sleep focus mode. I just finished washing the dishes, did my 17 minute workout with the Nike training app. And this is my six day streak, which is amazing. Took a shower. So for the rest of the night, I'm just gonna chill, watch some Twitch streams. Hi, Siobhan! Shout out to you guys, one of my boys, Siobhan. Make sure to subscribe to him. He makes By the way, shout out to Lo if you're watching this right now. So, yeah, around this time, I just watch Twitch streams, YouTube videos until I fall asleep, hopefully before 12, because I need some rest for tomorrow, which is gonna be a very, very heavy editing day. Okay, Google. Turn off the lights. <laughs> 